Saturday. We've got Teresa here. We've got Brad trying to, there they are. We got Brad. Say hi, Brad. Hey. We are about to take the tour at Neptune's. Brad, since he's been doing so well lately, might have an industrial accident. We're gonna turn Brad into fertilizer. So, <laughs> probably not. But uh, let's check it out. It'll be pretty interesting. I'm excited. I should note that I was trying to use a brand new microphone to do a little, uh, you know, talking beforehand. However, I had a technical malfunction. So this video will include some voiceover work. We're in Gloucester, we're in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Let me correct that. At uh, Neptune's Harvest first facility. Um, and I'm just kind of pointing out Teresa Rodriguez, the president of the RMGVG, uh, Casey Kevin, Chris Dunn, and uh, Chris Brown, as well as tons of different growers you can see here that are on this tour. Um, and from Neptune's Harvest is going to, going to explain to us kind of uh, what this factory is, a little bit of the history. And uh, let's listen in. that went out of business, so we were forced to pay fishermen to take it to sea and dump it. So my dad and my uncle started the fertilizer division to use 100% of the fish and not waste anything. So in the 80s, we just sold it to bulk, um, in bulk to farms. And then um, in the 90s, we started bottling it for retail. And ever since then, we just keep adding to the line with crab shell, seaweed, other products that we make now. Um, the wharf was always run by women because the men were out at sea fishing. So all the fish cutters, the fish packers were all women. So there was a mural dedicated to the fish workers because there's a lot of monuments to the guys that go to sea. Fisherman's Memorial Monument on the boulevard. But there hasn't been a lot to recognize the women that worked on the wharfs that kept Gloucester running. You know, they, they, they raised the families and they worked hard to pack all the fish because there were millions of pounds of fish coming in so they were the fish cutters and the fish packers um, so this is our kind of our wharf here when you look out you'll see when we go back there that's kind of what it looks like that's a, what they call a bumper those are the guys that unload the fish with a basket of fish coming onto the wharf uh, this bottom right is my cousin Lenny McCullum who worked here his whole entire life he's my age I grew up with him he passed away a few years ago from cancer so up on there too, but this is, he cut fish in this building his whole entire life. Thank you. Look at what's that oh, right there. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, jeez, that, that was scary. <laughs> Chris Blash. Is that a Thanks, shark right there? After Teresa changed into a fresh pair of underwear, we made the probably 10 minute drive over to their uh, warehousing and, and production facility, which from a small business owner perspective, um, it's super cool to see the success that this company has had, taking things that are, you know, essentially waste and making them into, you know, a product that's used the world over and being very successful at it. I mean, as you'll see in a moment, this is a huge warehouse with, uh, you know, lots of staff um, and just a ton of commerce being transacted through it. So let's listen to Ann tell us a little bit about it. The bird's Eye building was where Clarence Bird's Eye invented frozen food. Oh, wow. And so we tried to buy that. It was a, you know, old warehouse, uh, beautiful old building, but everybody called it an eyesore, said it was falling into the ground. Not true. But um, they wanted to redevelop it for a hotel. So they tried to change the zoning from Marine Industrial to uh, an overlay district to allow the hotel. And we wanted to buy it for our warehouse. Long, 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 sad story later. Obviously the hotel's there where we had to buy over here. So now everything gets shuffled from one building to the other. This, you know, 10 miles away, it's kind of frustrating, but we have a beautiful spot here. Plenty of room. The trucks can get in and out really easily. Um, over here, this swamp is like a wildlife bird sanctuary. We see every kind of bird, beavers, minks. It's like really nice little place awesome. to come clear your head. And I can just look out the window and see all the different birds. It's, it's really beautiful. And I actually live one mile from here, which I never imagined when I bought my house that I would we would end up with a warehouse here. So it just worked out really great. I literally like live one mile door to door from here. So it's convenient. You don't go home stinking like fish every day. We got tons of rum. So we'll go in and I'm gonna um, bring you through the warehouse and then we'll come back in here. Here we are inside their facility. 
we kind of walk through the office area. This is obviously the loading bays uh, where the uh, packed up pallets get, uh, get ready to go out across the country to their distribution warehouses. Inside is absolutely massive. I don't know how many square feet they have, but I'm going to throw out, oh, at least 500,000 just because it sounds like a nice round number. Um, we go over here to what was called the Crab Shack. This is kind of where they packed up their uh, shell product. Uh, there's some seaweed. Ann takes us outside here and tells us about the, uh, the big sprayer, this big giant uh, stainless steel semi-tanker that uh, gets pumped full of uh, Neptune's harvest and then it travels across the country. We have a 5,000 gallon tanker truck. The 5,000 gallon tanker truck is in Indiana right now at a farm. He's offloading tonight or tomorrow morning in Indiana. Um, so big farmers use it. They put it. If they have a tank, we can pump it into when we get there. We just pump it into their tank and come back. So least expensive way to buy it is in bulk if you have a tank to pump it into for the big farmers. But um, what we do is we fill up the tanker truck at Ocean Crest, where we just were, with the fertilizer out of the big tanks, bring it over here and pump it right in through that wall. There's a, there's a hose and it goes right into those mixing tanks right in here. And all these tanks in here is where we add the products to make, like we'll add seaweed to make our fish seaweed blend. We'll add molasses, humate, yucca extract, biological microbes, liquid calcium in varying amounts to make our lawn starter turf formula, tomato and veg formula, rose and flowering formula. So all the specialty products are made in here and then we run them through the bottling machines. We have two bottling machines, which I'll show you, but I just wanted to show you the tank of trucks and how we get them from one building over to here to, to bottle everything. Yeah. And most of the drums and totes of fish are filled at the other building, but everything else is done here. From the facility that's on the ocean front, all the product gets pumped into those big blue tanks. And from there, uh, they can mix it to whatever solution or formula they're trying to uh, create and then it goes into their larger drums or buckets and then they have a pretty sweet bottling uh, line here nothing uh, you know no trade secrets here it's just a filling line as well as a label application line kind of goes down there at the end there's a spinner that puts the labels on it and then those guys at the end put it in boxes tape it up and away it goes up next on the tour was the Glosta Fish House, where uh, apparently this is where all the all the cool kids hang out, all the locals, all the captains from Wicked Tuna, which uh, Captain Bob was there from the Fat Tuna. I talked with him a whole heck of a lot. Um, up next is our interview with Ann, and uh, listen in. So we're going to have an interview with Ann Malloy, the president. No. Um, the CEO, sales director. Sales director. <laughs> and marketing. Marketing, Neptune's Harvest. Uh, we just had lunch with the GPC growers. We just saw Neptune's Harvest, their Guri facility, as well as your shipping and bottling warehouse and all that stuff. We got a couple of questions for Ann, who's been nice enough to sit down now that everybody's gone, and we'll just have a, a quick discussion. Just me and you, Ann. Nobody else here now. Just the bartender kind of shooing us out. <laughs> um, so if you could, can you tell me, you know, who you are, what's your role at Neptunes, what do you do as I uh, leave some tip here and pay for, <laughs> pay for the drinks? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a family business, so I am one of the owners, but there's seven owners. I have uh, three brothers, a sister, and two cousins. And so we're a family business, and I am in charge of uh, sales and marketing. That's awesome. Um, I'm the youngest of the five kids, so, um, you know, my... I have a brother that's kind of the CEO, but we all pretty much own and run it. And we have a seafood company still and the fertilizer division. That's interesting. So, so you know, uh, going off topic a little bit is, so could you explain that kind of aspect of your business where yeah, I think probably the core of your business is the seafood and, and Neptune's is like the sustainable division of your Ocean Crest seafood. Correct. That you know, otherwise would just go, would go to waste. Is that, that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So um, my grandfather started the seafood business in the 20s. And then in 1965, my dad bought it from him. It was his father-in-law, not his dad. And then um, we just were a wholesale fish company for 
many, many years. And then in the 80s, there was a fish plant in Gloucester that took all the fish remains, which we call gurry, and they made pet food out of it. And they went out of business. So we were forced at the time to throw away all the fish remains. And when you fillet a fish, 60 to 70% is left over. So we were throwing away more of the fish than we were saving for food. And it was wasteful, it was bad for the environment, it was expensive to get rid of it. You know, they were dumping it in the ocean, which as it decomposed, created a dead zone out there because it sucked the oxygen out of the water. And you know, we were wasteful and expensive. So my dad got together with the University of Massachusetts Marine Station, and they helped us develop a process to turn it into fertilizer. So now we can utilize 100% of the fish by turning the, the gurry, the remains, into organic liquid fish fertilizer. That's so cool. That's so cool. So that, that's probably a good segue <laughs> into Slash. You kind of answered, like, you know, how and when, how and when did Neptune start? And, you know, what, what is the origin story of, of the company? Yeah. So um, when the dehyde, they called it the dehyde because it dehydrated the fish for pet food, went out of business, a lot of um, really wealthy people started moving into the... East Gloucester area and complaining about the smell and that's why it got <laughs> shut down and that's why I fight hard to keep our working waterfront a working waterfront because we don't want to get shut down. Right. Um, but and I, can, I can see that with all the with all the houses here and your, your factories literally I can see the green tanks right there and probably many millions of dollars home but you, you were here first. You know, yeah. This is yeah. this is a working, this is you know, a working harbor, waterfront you yeah. know, that's not just tourist you're you're trying to make a living with for you and your family as well right. as all your employees. And you have to walk the line because you know we love tourism for sure, but you don't want it to tip the scales and overtake the working waterfront. I think tourists come here because we're an authentic working waterfront with a lot of fishing boats, and that's our character, and we don't want to lose that. Right. So I fight hard for that. But yeah, that's how we got into the fertilizer business was when the dehyde closed, we had to do something with it. And uh, we all knew it made great fertilizer, right? The, the Indians did it. The um, old Italian fishermen had the best tomatoes right. in the city because right. they were always burying the fish remains in there. So yeah. we knew it worked. And so we started doing it. And in the beginning, we just sold to farms. We did not sell to homeowners. We just sold bulk to farms. But over the year, we've just evolved and turned it into um, a, a, a big business by utilizing all of Everything that the ocean has to give us that is perfect source of nutrients that plants and soil need. Right. And it's not because we're geniuses, it's because the product works really well. Right, and when you say like fish fertilizer too, it's not just fish. You know, at the tour today we saw like the, the, the crab powder and the, the, the lobster shells and you, so you are literally using, you know, anything that probably gets come, brought up from the sea here at your yeah. harbor, um, everything. From yeah, snoot, like snoot to toot. in the beginning, it was just the, the fish. And then we started with the seaweed, which has got a ton of benefits. And, and that's very sustainable. It regrows. So you could just cut it and it will regrow. And that has full of trace minerals that all the plants need. And then we went into the crab and lobster shell business in another way to utilize 100% of the crab and the lobster, right. which was getting thrown away. So, you that's know, so it cool. just makes sense. And what year did Neptune's Harvest you know, get started? Or your, your we, we started in the mid-80s. Yeah. Um, it probably took us, you know, early 80s maybe, but it took us probably 10 years to perfect it and get yeah. it right where we felt we had a really great product to, to so sell. 30, 30 plus year business. That's, that's great. Um, is there any meaning behind the name of Neptunes? Is it just, you know, a god of the sea kind of thing? You, how is fun? Is there any special meaning behind that? Well, Neptune, King Neptune is the Roman god of the sea. But um, my grandfather, when he started his whiting brand, he called it Neptune Seven Seas. And the salad dressing people, Seven Seas Salad Dressing, actually had to buy the rights of that name from my dad huh. and my uncle. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but it was Neptune Seven Seas Whiting brand. And so when we went into the fertilizer business, we wanted to keep the Neptunes. So we did, and then harvest, right? We're growing food with products from the ocean. Yeah. So it's, it's King Neptune's harvest. That's great. Um, so, you know, obviously the agriculture industry is, is, is always changing. You know, what, what is in vogue one year is, is not, you know, in the next, but we just said, you know, you guys have been around for, for 30 years. So, you know, you're, you're always adding and changing and adapting, you know, over the years, you know, what have you guys done as a company to kind of keep up with the needs uh, for gardeners as a whole, no matter what industry it is? 
Yeah. So we first started with just the fish in bulk, two farms. Then we started bottling it for retail sizes so any home gardener could use it also. Then we went into the sea seaweed and we had our fish and seaweed blend and then we went into straight seaweed and then we added the dry seaweed which is our kelp meal and then our crab and lobster shell and then we get feedback from the growers all the time uh, okay we like to use humate we like to use yucca extract we like to use calcium microbes and molasses we feed a lot of molasses but we're buying four or five different products to mix together if you could come up with a product that had all these in one we would we would love it it would save us a huge amount of time right. so that's kind of you know where the next generation of products started so then people are like we want a tomato fertilizer we want a flowering fertilizer so we came up with a little higher phosphorus for more flowering and just kind of tweaked our formulas made sure they didn't blow up <laughs> on a shelf you know right, right. and then once we had a stable product that looked good and 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 stayed stable we'd go into the trials and we'd start trialing it and then we'd send samples out to customers and say, try this, try this. We'd get feedback and um, we'd go to trade shows and people would say, you can't put phosphorus on lawns in my community anymore. If you could come up with a zero phosphorus fertilizer, we could sell a lot of it. You know, the garden center owners would say this to us. So we started a product where we stabilized with citric acid instead of phosphoric acid. And that's our turf formula and lawn starter. So. Basically, listening to our customers, trial and error. Um, we've, we've we've got ten liquids and two dry products now, so that's we've great. come a long way. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and two, like going on the tour, I didn't realize that I would imagine a very large part of your business is is just like large farms with your what was it a five thousand gallon truck and mm -hmm. and a forty six hundred gallon truck that that. It was in Indiana or something yeah. right now, like pumping off your gurry <laughs> for, for massive farms. I, I had no idea. I always thought that just, you know, that nice little pint bottle or the little sample size, yeah. even a five gallon bucket, but it doesn't seem like, you know, doing the factory again, it was just, you know, volume that probably a lot of people who watch my channel or will ever watch this, you know, it's, it's much more than just your retail store that, uh, that, you know, somebody growing tomatoes in their backyard. So, yeah. so you're doing, you know, big as well as small, uh, you know, farming and, and growing. And, and I, I love that the most, honestly, um, I'm really thrilled that home gardeners love it, but the more we could sell to farms and have them putting organic fertilizer on their farm instead of chemicals that are, you know, making the soil hard packed and need more, herbicide or pesticide because there's no biological life and the nutritional value in the food is so high because the fish has you know your macronutrients micronutrients trace elements amino acids vitamins enzymes minerals omega oils you're literally giving that plant all the nutrients that it needs in nature's perfect balance right. because the world was under ocean water at one point so it makes sense why these products work and it'll actually sequester carbon. It'll retain moisture in the soil, so you need less water. And I feel like an Neptune's harvest can help save the world, you know? Oh, yeah. We can sequester carbon and build organic matter and just make the nutrient-dense food. So when you eat it, it's so much better for you. So you're, sa so you're saving a, the world one bottle good. of uh, fertilizer at yeah. a time. <laughs> Like that, that's, you're like a you're like a Marvel superhero. You gotta think of like a, a superhero name for you now. Cape Ann. Yeah. I already have one. <laughs> I like it. Um, so, and you know, obviously, there's a lot of fish emulsion, you know, fish type product, you know, fish fertilizer type of things on the market. And we've talked about how you you know you do, you know, not just fish per se. You do lots of stuff. You know, so what makes Neptune's Harvest, you know, better than the next guy? Or is there anything that differentiates you to, to you know, stand out from the rest? Yeah, absolutely. So Fisher Motion has been around for a long time. It, you know, there's one called Alaska that everybody knows. It's nothing to do with Alaska. It's just a pretty name. It's harvested from the Menhaden in the Gulf of Mexico. And most fish emulsions, fish solubles, come from the Gulf of Mexico, which has a big dead zone now at the mouth where the Mississippi River, because of chemical fertilizer runoff, has created a dead zone. But it's Menhaden, which is a type of herring. And they remove the meal for pet food. They remove the oil for fish oil products. And the wastewater that's left after those two processes, they boil down to a 50% solution. 
and that's fish emulsion. So it's thick, it's smelly, and it still works, you know, which is amazing, right? It still works. But ours is cold process all the way through. We don't remove anything except the filet, which people eat, right. and maybe some of the bigger bone particles that don't dissolve completely and hydrolyze in our grinding process and hydrolyzing process, and we screen those out, which is a very small amount. But that's it. And that goes to a composting facility, so it's still used. Right. So we're utilizing 100% of the fish. It's cold processed, no temperature at all, just the grinding, natural grinding, and, and the pumps that whip it around the tanks. And that's it. So the enzymes are still alive. All your heat-sensitive nutrients are still intact. It's not stinky like fish emulsion. And it's one ounce per gallon of water, so a little bit goes a long way. Right. And, and, and the fish that are caught, that we use, are caught well offshore in the very cold, clean, dark, mineral-rich North Atlantic Ocean. Right. It's not lake fish, river fish, farm fish, Gulf of Mexico fish. I mean, it is really good quality fish. The fillets are haddock, cod, flounder, all fish that people eat. 15, 20 different species probably. But every fish has a little bit different um, nutrient analysis, so it's good to mix them all together. You're getting everything they need, and the quality, I don't think anybody even comes close to the quality of what we have. So when we had like, so we had lunch over there from the, the buffet, that food was, you know, when was that fish at your facility? This probably. morning. So, so we It came had, off the boat this morning, right. and then we brought it over here. They cooked it for us this afternoon. So it does, it get, and, and, you know, and at some point in the next, you know, how, who knows how long, that will be, you know, made into fertilizer. So it's, you know, literally, Whatever I could, we I didn't could throw eat. a rock over there to their factory, yeah. and we had the fish that was caught on the boat out in the ocean. So it's, you know, hyper local. It, it's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, in general, you know, kind of a broad reaching question, but what do you feel like your biggest contribution is to the gardening world? Neptune's Harvest, you know, has a great name, a great reputation. It's in my mind when you think, you know, fertilizers, Neptune's is one of those synonymous names that kind of go hand in hand with it. Um, do you have anything that maybe stands out or your biggest contribution just as a whole? Existing. Well, I mean, <laughs> personally, I just love the fact that you're in Colorado and love our products. I mean, we've, we've gotten products from the ocean that has all the nutrients we need, like, throughout the country now. That, that blows my mind. We've come a real long way since we started. And I just love that it's organic, it's sustainable, it's something we were throwing away already like waste wasting it and now we right. can turn it into something you really valuable you, you had to pay people to take it out right and dump it back in yeah. the day yeah. yeah so being able to utilize it all knowing how great it works i mean we're we're not geniuses we got lucky with our fertilizer working so well that we've just grown and grown and grown because it works so well people yeah. are like wow this stuff works great and they keep buying it and telling yeah. people and so um i think i'm most proud that we can use organic fertilizers that will outperform chemicals, which will save our soil and make nutrient dense food and grow things better than a chemical fertilizer can. Right. Um, and, and then we're a family business. We're going on our fifth generation now. My right. son works there. That, my sister's son. grandson works there. Yeah. And I just, it's a proud thing to take my family traditions of hard work and um, ambition and turn it into products that really work great and people love. Yeah, oh, that's that's phenomenal. In, in, a, in, a, in a world of mega corporations and, and CEOs that are sitting in a desk in New York City and whatnot, like you are, we saw it today at the tour, <laughs> and I'll, you know, make that video of it. It's, 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 all, it's all there, and that, that's, that's so cool, that, that's awesome. Um, and you know, you guys leading the market in that, and I think, uh, you know, just setting, setting the standard high. Um, you know, another broad reaching question, but you know, because you're, you have a lot of different formulas and a lot of different things from rose to turf to crab meal, but is there any just general tips for anybody who wants to, um, you know, use your product or, or just, just tips in general for any of it? Sure. Like you could get very complex with it and you could keep it extremely simple. I mean, you could just use our fish on everything and it's going to work great. So keep it simple, like if I had to pick two of my favorite products, it's the crab and lobster shell mixed in the soil before you plant and then liquid feed the fish and seaweed blend. Yeah. So extremely simple. You could make it very, you know, 
some people like to dial in all different little nuances, and that's great. Like giant pumpkin people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people get carried away. <laughs> but seriously, you could just use the fish and have a great garden. And it's not just flowers or vegetables or grass. You can put that on anything, yeah. and it will grow a great crop. Awesome. Is there anything that, that everybody needs to know about Neptune's Harvest, you know, as, as we wrap up here that, that uh, you know, you just want to tell people in the YouTube land about your company? <laughs> um, well, basically, we're just a family company with some great products, and they work really well on everything you grow. Um, you know, use it. It helps your soil, helps your nutrient density, helps you feel better. You just feel really good about using our products and they're going to work and yeah. you know no matter how good a gardener you are neptune's harvest will make you look good that's right <laughs> and I've, I've used neptune's harvest i've been growing giant pumpkins for this will be my sixth year and that's neptune's harvest is the only product i've used every single year wow. and i just you know again you like like you just said i think i feel good about using it it's something now that i know is is even even better than what i thought it's it's a whole product that um, you know, small small business, sustainable, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's just great. I, I uh, thanks thanks for sitting awesome. down and interviewing me. Thank you with so me. much. I, I really it. appreciate it, Chad. Yeah. It's great. Cool. Appreciate you. Cut. <laughs>